So it is November 30th and I'm definitely not at home. I had my surgery yesterday for hysterectomy. I feel, I don't feel like April right now. Um, I don't really feel too good. I had the oxygen mask on for a while at the tubes because it's hard for me to breathe. My blood pressure went down. Um, but doctor came in to see me today and he's so sweet and nice, but I didn't have like the best of news. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't know that I was going to have my uterus, my cervix and my left ovary and fallopian tube removed. Okay. And when he came to see me today, I don't have anything anymore. I don't have a right one. I don't have a right ovary. I don't have any ovaries. And because it was so scarred, the walls and the tissue were so scarred on my insides. And I had um, endometrius so bad. The cysts on my ovaries were so bad that it kind of like scarred the whole inside of me. And then he says to me, now I see why you were in such excruciating pain all the time. But the pain that I had every month when I had my period was the worst pain ever. For like three to four days, it felt like I was in like labor, like I was getting contractions. The pain got so bad that I just couldn't move um, at all. And the sucky part about it when I was to get my period, I couldn't even use the bathroom. Like, you know, number one, peeing, I couldn't even do that. I was in a lot of pain for days each month. And then it got to start getting really bad towards the last few months, meaning up, leading up to this, to where, you know, my period would be over. But um, I would still bleed. But it was like a brownish color. I worked myself up to finally doing this. I'm just going to show you guys what they had me wearing. So I have this on, which is like, a, um, I don't know what this is called, to be honest. I'll have to look it up. But it kind of like holds you together. It's like a really good girdle. Okay, a compressor. For real. I get to take this home. I get another one. Girl, let me tell you, this would be the best thing ever. And then I also have things on my legs. Um, it doesn't look bad. There's no staples or stitches. Um, I have a compression machine on my legs. Now I have on these on my legs oh. to um, massage my legs <sighs> because I have bad, poor circulation. So, um... I have these on my legs and they're comfortable, but I just want them off now and I just keep falling asleep, you know, in and out of sleep. I keep falling asleep. I just want this to be over with. The food isn't that great. <laughs> Like I got some chicken noodle soup and it had three noodles in it. Not the skinny noodles, but the, the big fat noodles, like the rigatoni, I think they're called. Whatever you can make like ziti with them. They're they're like, you could use it for macaroni and cheese. I had three of those in them. Like what happened to the rest of the chicken noodles and soup? It's just called, it should just be called broth. Chicken broth and, 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 and a few noodles. But... As far as the recovery period goes, like, you know, you do have a catheter in, so a catheter, so you will, um, you know, like a pee bag, you will have one of those. So, you know, I finally started going to the bathroom today on my own because I had that in for over 24 hours. They do want you to walk a lot because if you don't walk, you know, it's just really not good for you. You should be able to walk. Um, they do want you to practice breathing. So I have this machine here. Um, I have this machine, this little 
handy dandy thing. And so all I have to do is put my mouth on this and blow into it. So that way my lungs will go back to normal. Um, after you have surgery, they want you to use these. And it's not just for hysterectomy, it's for surgery in general. Because they say sometimes your lungs will not really shut down, but they won't work as they usually do. Because, you know, surgery, your lungs have kind of like shut down a little bit. So they want them to build back up. So they want you to use this and breathe on it. So that way you don't get pneumonia in your lungs. As far as the pain, I am on Percocets. And um, I have Percocets and some type of liquid ibuprofen that was in my IV through it all, I think it was called. I'm not really sure. I can't remember how to pronounce it, but I do get Percocets, which um, every four hours, and it's ibuprofen. And um, when I went to the surgery, the um, anesthesiologist, he put medication in my back, in my spine. And it, was, it reminded me a lot of an epidural so, um, because the medication was in my spine and I could feel my legs, um, just getting numb, like losing feeling, like, you know what I'm saying? It was like in no matter of time, I started feeling my legs tingling, like if they were going to sleep and then I couldn't feel them like that anymore. But next thing you know, I was waking up to oxygen in my nose and I don't even remember going to sleep. Nobody told me to count backwards. Nobody told me, like, you're going to take this now and you're about to fall asleep. Nobody told me anything. I don't even remember falling asleep. Like, serious. I, I don't even remember. Okay. Um, but so when I woke up, you know, I had the oxygen. Um, and I can't even remember had the oxygen and and they brought me to my room, you know, which is here. And this is where I've been ever since. Like some of it is like in and out. I just noticed like it, you know, I haven't really had to endure too much pain because I have been on like medication, but it's, it's very hard to walk. And, um, like, I really didn't think it was going to be this bad. Like, it's not that bad, but it makes you very tired. And I don't know if it's the medication that they're giving me, but I'm, like, so tired. I fall asleep while I'm on the phone, fall asleep while I'm texting. I just keep falling asleep. So I'm, like, really tired right now, and I just want to go to sleep. So I'm going to take a nap before the nurse come in here and be like, oh, let's go for a walk. Let's go for walks, you know. I'm like really tired. So I will speak to you guys later on. I just need to rest for a little while. I'm sorry. I really did want to make this like my hospital vlog and things. Um the hospital is really nice. The people here are really, really nice. Um, but the food isn't it's not really that great. My hair looks like a piece of crap. Look at it. It's like all over the place. Like, I don't really care. <sighs> um, one of my eyelashes look kind of wonky, too. But I'm going to get some sleep. Then it looks like I have no neck. But I do. It's right there. It's just the way I'm laying. So, you guys, I will talk to you later. <sighs> okay, you guys. So, this is the next day. I've been here for three days. I've been here for three days. Today is Saturday. I've been here since Thursday at 5 o'clock in the morning. So it's been three days. I also have on a patch. Like I forgot to mention, it's a hormone patch. So I have to take it off on December 6th. Um, I'm really not feeling that great today. Um, I'm in a lot of pain. They kept asking me, did you pass gas? Did you pass gas? I'm like, no, no. And they want you to pass gas. Like, I can't. But I did finally today. And let me tell you, when you when it's time for you to pass gas, your stomach gets like in this tight knot. 
and it hurts so bad. But like about an hour ago, I had um, Percocet with ibuprofen. And so taking the Percocet, it's not really, like it helps with the pain somewhat, but it makes me fall asleep. So I could just be here texting and I'm falling asleep. Or I could be talking to you on the phone and I'm just falling asleep in the middle of the conversation. And I didn't know what it was, why I was doing this, until the doctor said it's the Percocet. Which I don't really like taking it, but I get really, really tired out of the blue and I just start falling, like nodding off. My daughters came to see me, Mumsy and Nay, they came to see me. Um, I sent them in a lift because um, Tati was home, but she was sleeping. And um, they don't really like driving with her know how because she can't really drive that great. So I sent them in the lift. So, you know, it's pretty close. The hospital's pretty close to my house. So Mom Z and they came, and they stayed with me for like an hour and a half, two hours. And Mom Z was going to spend the night, because you can spend the night here with your um, patient. Like, they don't care. They make you, They have a bed for you and everything. I don't know if you guys can see it right there, but that turns into a bed. It pulls off. They have, like, all these blankets and stuff. And they would have brought in another one for Nay. <laughs> But I just wanted them to be really comfortable, you know. And I wouldn't have mind the company. I would have really enjoyed the company. But I just told them to just, you know, I was just going to send them home. But Mumsy was adamant about staying. She had changed her clothes when she got here because I had some pajama bottoms that I have brought with me. That I don't know why I brought them, but she had those. She put those on. She had, um, what else did I have? I had some stuff that she she put those on. She got comfortable. I had my blanket. She used that. Pillows. Mumsy was ready. I'm just so tired, you know. I just want to go to sleep. Like, I don't even want to go to sleep, but I just, I keep dozing off, so. I'm so tired, you guys. This is like an ordeal, for real. I just want to go to sleep somewhere. I'll speak to you guys later. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm home, guys. This oh. is the third day after my surgery. Today's Sunday. So I had it on Thursday. So, yeah, third day after. But fourth day or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I came home yesterday afternoon. And um, i just been, like, laying on the couch. This that's all I really can do. Not really hungry. I don't really eat, but um, I have eaten, but I'm not really hungry. I got my hair in these two braids. Got on my house dress. Do have like some swelling. It starts burning, like in this area right here. It just started burning, and I noticed that it starts burning when I'm like either late on my medication. Like I woke up this morning at nine. But I, I didn't really wake up, wake up. Like, I have been waking up all night, off and on. So I don't really get to sleep good. But um, I was like an hour and a half, two hours late on taking um, the medication. So when I got up, it was like burning. Like it felt like a burning sensation from inside. And then, um, which is painful. And then once you take that, you know, you don't feel like that anymore, which is good. And then I took off the Band-Aid that I had wrapped around my belly because now I could only wear it like up to eight hours a day because, you know, they wanted to get dry in that area and kind of scab up. And I finally got to see what it looked like last night. You can't even tell. Like, I mean, you can tell, but I'm, look, I already had a belly, so I'm not really trying to be pulling it up to see what it really looks like like that, but... My daughters told me that it looked really good, and it's not not a bad incision at all. So it's not one of those that's going to give you, like, a scar. Like I said, they glued it together on the outside, and on the inside, they sewed it together because it's layers and layers of skin that they sewed it through. And that sounds really, really gross, but yes. Um, but as far as me being home, so it does take me a little bit longer to move around. I'm, I've just been, you know, trying to relax. But other than that, you know, um, I haven't used the bathroom. Like, I, of course, I have peed. And that doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to pee. Because you can feel, like, some weird kind of, like, sensation. It's not really burning, but it's a sensation. 
Um, I have not done number two. And I, I don't even think I want to because I'm scared, you know, because you have to push when you have to do number two. And I don't really want to rip anything. But um, as long as you pass gas, then that's good. They want you to pass gas. Passing gas is a good sign, they said. And I have been passing gas. Okay, yes. I don't want to smell anybody out, but I have. You just have to make sure that you wear comfortable clothes. So they did send me home with, like, stuff. Like, they sent me home with, like, these diapers. Like, when I say these diapers, they are diapers. Like, one of them is a pad, and the pad is kind of big, and it looked like a damn near diaper for a baby. And the other one is a diaper. Like, it's the size of a diaper for an adult. Like, I'm not about to wear that. Um, no, I'm not about to wear that. The only thing that I would say is if you feel that you have to go to the bathroom, like, number one, I would definitely suggest that you get up and get to go into the bathroom. Don't wait. Like, hold it for too long because your bladder is kind of weak from, you know, surgery and stuff. And depending on how you maneuver, you might take you a minute to get to the toilet. And plus, you got to sit down, which is another process, you know. So, I would say that as, as soon as you feel that you have to use the bathroom, definitely go to the bathroom. So, that way, you're not finding yourself rushing or also urinating on yourself. Um, so that's probably why they give you the diapers. But I don't really want to put the diaper on. I also do have one of these that's from the hospital. And it's just the thing that goes on the bed. Just in case, like, if you have an accident or whatever. Um, you know what I mean? You don't have to get it on your furniture or stuff like that. Plus, I, my furniture is new. And I don't really want to be, like, laying on there all day. And they passing gas and it's all on my gas smells on my couch. You know what I mean? So I really wanted that there. Um, and then when you take a shower, like you can only suds up, like soap up from the breast up. And then the rest of you, you just have to let the soap, the water run through you. You cannot use lotion. You cannot use shower gel. You cannot use any type of um, products. So you just want to rinse off and you have to definitely pat, pat. Pat, 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 pat to dry off. And you have to use a different towel every single day. So you want to keep that in mind. I really did honestly think that I, I was not, I didn't, honestly, I did not think it was going to be this bad. Like I did tell you guys that I was going to come home. I was going to make a couple of wigs and stuff like that. But I guess I fooled myself. But I mean, I, you know, over time it gets better. The only thing I don't really like is the bloating of my stomach. But, you know, that's to be expected. You don't want to eat too many foods. That definitely don't want to eat anything that's going to make you constipated. You want to try to eat something that will allow you to go to the bathroom easily, like softly. So, and, and get yourself like a stool softener because you don't want to be in the bathroom pushing. But you guys, I feel like I'm about to nod off on you. So I'm going to go for right now and I will speak to you guys later. Before, after my full hysterectomy surgery, okay. Um, I look a little weird. I'm not even weird, but my hair is a mess. Look at it. My cornrows are coming out. They're like two days old. If that, they're not really two days old. But I took a shower today and I got on some of my pajamas. And look how it made me so bloated. Like, I don't have a bra on, so I have on like a bandero or whatever you call it. A bandero. A bando or whatever you call it. But I have this thing on, which I have to wear um, to support my stomach. It is called a abdominal binder. Okay. So I have that on and I'm a little bit um, swollen. I don't really like that because I didn't look like this before I went to the hospital. And afterwards, I look worse. Like, um, yeah, I thought I was going to come home looking at least better in the stomach area because they took the fibroids and all of that stuff out of my stomach. But, um, no, I look worse. Like, looks like I didn't even have not worked out yet, ever. But I feel a little bit better today. Um, um, I do feel a little bit better. I'm still tired because I have to take these medication. And I got my patches today for my hormones. And Tati put one on me. They're awful small. They weren't like the one, the big round one that's on my back. When she picked it up from the pharmacist, they're real tiny. 
like I don't even know if you guys can see them. Um, is it there? Is it there? You see it now? Well, where's the patch at? Nay's gonna show you guys. You see it? It's right here, guys. Okay. So that's the patch, and I have to change it twice a week. At least it's not as big as the other big round one. So that way it doesn't clash with my outfits and stuff. So Nay stayed home with me today because I needed someone to help me and take care of me. Hey, so Nay's crazy. So she, <laughs> <laughs> she stayed home with me to help me today. Um, so she helped me take a shower and stuff. And I mean, I like I feel better. Tati made me some soup. So I'm about to eat some broccoli soup right now. And we do have the house all decorated for Christmas. They got her game down here. She's playing. Um, Grand Theft Auto or whatever, however you say it. I'm not really GTA. saying it. The, I'm not really saying it the cool way, but it's called GTA. Yes. So we do have the house all decorated for Christmas and stuff. And outside, and I'll have Nate give you guys a tour of that because I'm just not really into it right now. But I do feel better. I'm going to pick up. Um, well, I don't feel 100% better, but I feel much better, more better than yesterday. About to take my medication. Um, last night, I, I was really bad off. Like, I had to sleep downstairs because I had got really, really sick and really dizzy and lightheaded from the medication. And then my stomach area started really hurting really bad um, to the point where I thought, like, my insides was going to fall out. I mean, I know they weren't. But I had put ice on it like Nay suggested, okay? And it seemed like after I put the ice on it, it started bothering me worse. And yes, Nay, you. But um, I just was really bad last night and really sore and it hurt really bad. So I stayed downstairs until like 5 o'clock in the morning just sleeping on the couch. And Nay stayed down here with me too. And I just couldn't move. And it was just like really bad pain. And um, I did go upstairs this morning at like five something and get into bed but I was still really sore so I haven't really got like really much good sleep last night. Oh god. It made my stomach so swollen. Like do you guys see how swollen my stomach is? And it's like all warm, okay? And it kind of feels like a little numb to me still. Like in some areas it feels numb and I'm not really sure why. But um I could feel it, but then I can't really feel it. Like, it feels numb. Like, I can feel when I'm going like this, but it doesn't feel like how it's supposed to. So, or anything. It's made my stomach so hard and swollen. It's just really swollen, you know. And these are the panties from the hospital and stuff. But, um, yeah, feeling, like, a little bit better today. Um, so, this is day four. Um, I will say this, I do walk a lot better, like, I'm able to walk better now, which is a good thing. I'm not walking like I'm, like, about to die, so. I'm not saying I'm going outside, because I haven't been outside in days, but, you know. But, you know, you have to, you just gotta have to take it one day at a time. You really do have to take it one day at a time. I don't really know how long the recovery period is. Some people say six to eight weeks. I guess it just depends on you. Yeah, that's about it. I'm going to take this medication that I'm on for the pain because if I don't take it, uh, it'll be like really hurting. And I actually was supposed to take it. The last time I took it was at like 530 this morning. So it's every four hours and it's now, what time is it? Like, 2:55. It's 2.55. So I went hours without it. I'm really trying not to take it because it's Percocet. And I really don't want to take that. You know what I'm saying? I will wait until like the last, last bit of pain so it doesn't really hurt that bad so if I'm not hurting I'm not taking it because I'm not trying to get addicted to anything but I do have ibuprofen too which I'll take the ibuprofen be having me like one of them has me nodding or they both do either one but yeah but I will speak to you guys later this is day five after my surgery day five and I'm feeling a lot better than yesterday or the day before that I just got out the shower, and I had my daughter Nay here to help me, and I'm walking a lot better, so I'm really happy about that. Um, 
Yeah, I just feel a whole lot better. I'm not 100%, but I feel a whole, whole, whole lot better today. But my stomach is like, uh, I, you know, I know this is just a process you have to go through, but I thought I would show you guys how my stomach looks real quick. And this is after the surgery. So it's really hard. You know how you can like suck in your stomach? You cannot like suck in your stomach after a hysterectomy. So don't think that you're going to go put on a waist trainer. Don't think that you are going to be able to put on your small clothes because your stomach area, the abdominal area is swollen. Okay. Not saying that my stomach was ever flat because it was not, but it was not this big and um, I'm swollen. So it has made me look like I have gained some pounds in this area, but you know, I'm not too concerned about that right now because over time I will be back to myself. So I am wearing the underwear from the hospital, which are these nylon panties, and they say that they like, they suggest to wear these. So they gave me quite a few. You know, you could just wash them out. They're very lightweight. They feel like um, a wig cap. That's exactly the same material that they feel like. And they, they're, they're high up, so they don't mess with the incision, and they're not, like, irritating. There's no elastic on it. So that's a good thing about them. Um, And, yeah, I've just been wearing those. So... This is my stomach, so it, it probably looks like I'm having a baby right now. And it's swollen, and it doesn't look that bad um, in person. It doesn't look that big in person, but this is how it looks right now. You know, wait for the stone to go down. It does take a few weeks, so, you know, I'm not going to be putting on no tight fitting dresses or doing no try-on hauls no time soon. And the incision is under here, so you really can't even see it. It's glued, and it's, like, under my fat meat, so you really can't see it. And it's it's kind of tender in this area. It's very tender. Okay, so it feels like, you know, you have to go to the dentist, and you've got your teeth work done, and you've gotten your mouth numbed, and over hours the numbing sensation is wearing off, so you can semi-feel the tingling of the numbing but you can feel the touch, but you can't feel the touch 100%. So that's what it feels like right in this area and stuff. It feels like it's semi-numb, like it doesn't have its entire touch. Oh my God, last night I had to sneeze and it was the worst. Um, but just try not to sneeze if you can. My daughter Nay said to look up and Mumsy said to pray. So I just do both. But okay, so yeah, this is day five. You know, since I got it on the 29th on Thursday, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, day five. And, you know, I didn't have to take my pain pills too much today. So that's a good thing because I really don't want to be, like, relying on them. And I'm glad I don't have to take them as much. That, like, gives me confidence, like, yes. But I'm walking better. My back just hurts because of the way I have to lay and stuff. Because, you know, it's hard to lay on your side. It feels like all of your weight is shifting to one side, which feels like it's tugging. But um, you definitely need to um, make sure that you drink lots of fluids. I have not used the bathroom yet, like number two. But for me to, like, if I have to pee, I definitely have to go right at the moment because your bladder is weak. So it's harder to um, hold um, yourself. So you don't want to have to hold yourself for too long if you have to pee. Um, and I really haven't had an appetite like that, like that, but you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I will keep you guys updated, um, on this journey. Um, I'll probably post the video for the day five post op, then I'll come back like, you know, like a two week post op. Okay. Today is actually the third week. Today makes exactly three weeks to the day of my hysterectomy surgery full hysterectomy surgery so you guys already know like i explained in the beginning of the video um they did take everything from me so this is just an update on how i've been feeling and maybe what to expect um everybody experiences different stuff so you know you may want to take what i have to say into consideration of what you may go through so please excuse the hair today i am feeling a lot better um Honestly, I'm feeling a whole lot better versus what I was feeling um, last week and like the few days after the surgery. So like I said, today is three weeks. And what I've noticed over the past few weeks, okay, so last Saturday, um, I, it was a few days, it was two weeks, what was it? 
it was two weeks and two days after the surgery. And um, I started bleeding, like nothing major was just like little spots of blood. Um, nothing you would typically need like a regular sanitary pad for. You put on like a panty liner and you'd be really good um, because you're not going to get like actual bleeding, bleeding as in like, you know, period blood bleeding. You won't get anything like that. But um, you will get like a bright red. It's not. It never turned out to be like a dark red color. It was always a bright red color. And I did look it up because at first I was really scared. I didn't remember them telling me like you know that I would be bleeding or anything. I didn't remember them telling me that. You know, I I was under like you know medication, so I really couldn't remember if they told me I would be bleeding. All I do remember is the doctor saying no more periods, no more periods. That's all he said. He didn't say you know you would bleed. So two weeks and two days after the surgery, I noticed that I had, you know, some spotting, light pink in color. And normally it wouldn't come out, you know, I would only notice it like if I went to the bathroom and wiped myself. Throughout the day, it's, I did start feeling like just little droplets of it. And, you know, I did have a panty liner on and I just kept an eye on it. It did stay like a light pink color, but then it also started kind of kind of like you know looking like a clearish slash pink color as well now like I said I was kind of nervous and scared I was ready to go to the emergency room because I really didn't know what was going on also because I did speak with someone who did have a full hysterectomy like a few months prior and she did not say anything about bleeding she did say she never had any bleeding so I looked it up because that's when I really got nervous. I looked it up on the internet and you actually will experience bleeding. And it did say um, within two weeks, normally it's within two to six to eight weeks that you'll see the bleeding. And it did explain on the, um, the, the website that the blood that you see is always going to be like a very light or bright red in color. And if it does start, if you do start bleeding heavy, then that's when you'll need to go to like the emergency room or call your physician. But if you see like little spottings um, of like a light red or a bright red color, then all you need to do is just wear a panty liner or a pad of your choice, but do not wear any tampons, of course. So this actually, the bleeding is actually from like your sutures, your stitches inside, dissolving and healing and your body just cleansing itself. So it's not something that's going to only last like a day. It did last for today will be, well, tomorrow, well, today is Thursday. So I've been noticing this still to this today. But like I said, all I need is a panty liner. Um, and it's so light that more than likely you probably won't even notice it on your panty liner. It all depends, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, that's to be expected. Um, some people may see that, some people may not. And I guess it all depends on what type of surgery you had as well. So I also noticed, and oh, I was so pissed off about this. Now for one, before the surgery even started, like before I even had surgery, I already had like a little stomach. I had a little pouch, you know, a little kangaroo pouch. Wasn't nothing major, but I did have a little kangaroo pouch, okay? Now, you know, I wear girdles and stuff or waist trainers, but I never felt it jiggle. Like I never felt it jiggle. Once I started like feeling a lot better and I was able to walk, I started noticing that like my stomach felt really, really jiggly, really kind of like wobbly and jelly-like. And I can feel it when I'm walking, which is very annoying. So I did ask that same person who I was speaking with, which is a friend of my daughter's. Um, she's at my daughter's job. She's an older woman. She's about my age. She did state that she also felt the same thing because, you know, she wasn't like slim. She was like my size, actually. She's my size. It's my build. So she didn't have like a flat stomach to begin with. So she was like a great person to, you know, ask the question about her, did her stomach feel jiggly or anything? Now, she got her surgery in August. I got mine's November 29th. So she did state that after her surgery, she noticed that her stomach did feel, you know, really jelly-like and she could feel it as she walked. And what she used to just, you know, help her was the band that you get from the hospital when you do the surgery. But, you know, that band is like a Velcro grip band. So it does wear out and it's very bulky and it's very annoying. So you definitely don't want to keep wearing that. I wouldn't suggest wearing a waist, a waist trainer because the boning inside. You could probably wear like a panty girdle. But also what she did suggest is she used one of the belly 
things for pregnant women, women to belly things. So I have one on. I have one of the belly pieces on. And this is from Target. Now this one is wider, so it does go all the way up to here, but I folded it over so that way I didn't have to have it up here. It feels like it's not enough support when I have it, you know, all the way up. So I double it so that way it gives me more support and it actually does work. So I don't feel like the wobble and the jiggling of my stomach. Um once it's once I'm able to exercise and stuff, I'm pretty sure that, you know. I can lose the stomach fat and just lose the weight. But for right now, being that I can't exercise for like six to eight weeks, which sucks, I'm just going to be able to wear that. The, all, the other thing that I also did notice is like, you know, when I sit forward, like now I, my stomach feels like it's kind of like folding. And I know when you do have a hysterectomy, they don't remove any bones or anything like that. They just basically, you know, remove your uterus and whatever else that they're going to take out during it. Um, and those are very small body parts. So, you know, it does have to do with the, the, you know, just the removal and the swelling. So also when I did go to my doctor two weeks, um, post, uh, I did see my doctor and the healing for my, um, scar was really good. The glue dried up. Um, I did, I was able to wipe it away and um, I did receive a new prescription for some new patches because the first ones that I received, um, you know, I noticed that I was waking up in like sweats. I was waking up in all type of sweating um, throughout the day. I was kind of getting hot and so forth. So I did let him know that, you know, these are the symptoms that I was going through. And, you know, being that I did have everything removed so drastically, you know, my hormones did go into shock. So I went into pre um, you know, menopause um, or at least not let me go into menopause with the actual um, patches. So the first patch that he gave me, and I'm going to show you guys real quick the patches that I received. So the first patches that I was prescribed were... Um, Just trying to take off the thing so you can see it was the estradol, and it's these um, 0 .05, 0 0.005 milligrams, and this is the lowest dosage, and it really wasn't doing a lot for me. Like you know, it did keep me from sweating and you know just having like crazy sweats, but also I was still sweating. I was still feeling like the actual you know um, I still was feeling like the hot flashes. I was still feeling hot. And in the night, at night, I would just wake up drenched in sweat, okay? And I was hot a lot of times, and the kids were like, Mommy, it's not hot in here. It's cold. So when I explained to my doctor that this was still making me hot, he gave me a higher dosage, same brand, but this is a higher dosage. This dosage is um, 0.1. So one is 0.5. And one is 0.1. So this is the lower dosage. The reason why he gave me the lower dosage is he wanted to see how it would work. He did also explain to me, explain to me that um, people of color, it doesn't have to be black. You can be Indian. Just people of color um, seem to need like a higher dosage because of the melon in our skin, which soaks and eats up the actual medication in the patches. So we... um He has noticed that with women of color. And also he says sometimes the higher pass higher dosages um will work better for some but also you can also take oral medication for it but the only issue with the oral is 80 percent of your liver will eat up the medication so you only get 20 percent of the actual dosage and over time it will really put an effect on your liver so i'm not really trying to you know have a liver transplant after a hysterectomy it's just not going to work um also i have noticed um like okay so you know, this is week three and what I started noticing, well, not even noticing, but a few days ago, this is probably like the third day, um, my stomach, like in the area, not even where my glue is at, not even where the actual opening was at, but a little bit higher up, it's so sore. Like it feels like it's bruised. Like to the, if you touch it, it hurts. Even just breathing, I just can feel like the soreness and I've tried like the ibuprofen 
Um, I tried like the Tylenol and nothing takes away the soreness. It's just very, very sore. And it feels like it's tender, but it's not hot. It's not tender. It's just very sore. So I don't know if it's from me just like, you know, becoming a little bit more active before time, but I will highly suggest like, listen, if it says that you have to take six to eight weeks of rest and don't do a bunch of shit, don't do a bunch of stuff. Like seriously, if it tells you not to do all these things, then take it from me. Don't do all this stuff. I mean, I know granted it's hard for a lot of us to just sit around in the house and not do the, anything for me. That was the issue. Like I'm, I just can't sit still. Um, because I'm not used to sitting still. So I needed to get out and I did get out like a week and a half afterwards, but a majority of the time when I was out, if I was in a store that, you know, had a electronic scooter chair, then I was in one of those. Okay. So I would suggest like, if you have to go somewhere, you have to go to any type of store, try to find like a scooter chair to ride around in, not a shopping cart to hold onto because that does not work. But I would suggest, you know, sitting in a scooter chair. Some people may not like it. Some people may feel like it's an embarrassment. And I did feel that way. But after a while, you know, I did feel like that because there was people, there was elderly people looking at me, you know, basically trying to just stare. I had someone try to say to me as I was on my way out the store, why are you in that? I need it. And you don't need that. Like you can never, never judge a book by its cover. Like, honey, I need this more than you do. Okay. Um, or more than you think I do. So, you know, I would highly suggest like basically getting into a scooter chair. If you, if you can find one, they do tell you to walk, but don't overdo it. Like for me, I went to um on sunday me and my two younger daughters we went out for the day and we didn't really go to many places we went to petsmart and we we stayed in petsmart in the adoption center portion of it and basically looked at the dogs because we were trying to find a dog and then being that we didn't want to find one there we went to the original rescue center that has its own you know own site and, you know, that was located in the mall. And I did have to walk through the mall. Granted, the mall is kind of big. Um, a lot of stores are closed, so it wasn't crowded, but I still had to walk through it. And by the time we were done, we had the dog and we walked back to the car. I was so sore. I had sharp pains in like my abdominal area and I still had to go to Walmart. So that's when I got into another scooter chair. I do notice that when I walk too much, it will definitely give me like a very sharp piercing pain. But I do suggest making sure like carry some ibuprofen with you. Make sure you don't overdo it because you will need rest. But like I said, this has been three weeks and so far so good. I did have like the pains on the side, like the right and left side only. And it was like a really, it just felt like a burning sensation. So when I did go to my doctor, he did tell me that the reason why it feels like it's burning, like it felt like skin ripping apart is because when they sew you up inside, they use like your skin to anchor the stitches. So it was the anchor knots on each side that was like burning. And this was definitely a life changing experience. Okay. Like for real, I honestly thought that this was going to be like a walk in the park and I really thought that it was going to be easy and I was going to be able to snap back into myself like at least a few days after. But honey, let me tell you, each person has their own threshold of pain. Each person has their own level of pain endurance. And this was something that I really didn't expect to happen. Like I really didn't think it was going to be this strenuous and this not even time consuming but i really didn't think that it was going to be this bad and it's not like a bad bad thing so like don't don't think like oh my god this is going to be the worst because it's definitely not but it is life-changing and you do have to have patience with the healing process i can deal with a lot of pain i can definitely deal with a lot of pain the thing i think that bothered me the most about this whole entire process was the fact that I just had to sit still and not do anything. You know what I'm saying? And I don't remember if I told you guys, I don't even remember them telling me to 
get ready to go to sleep or anything like that. I, I honestly don't remember any of that. I don't remember them saying, hey, girl, we about to um put this IV in you. I did have like an IV in my, my hand, but it was not attached to anything. There wasn't any kind of like IV drip attached to it. They just had prepared it so that when it was time, so I, trust me, I don't even remember them hooking it up to the IV when I was laying there. I don't know what they did, but you know, I guess it's kind of cool if you don't know when you're about to go to sleep because some people do have like anxiety. And I think that was one of my fears too, of them telling me, well, you know, we're going to put this in you and you're going to drift off to sleep. I don't remember them saying that they, they didn't say it. Okay. But I think that, you know, that was probably best. So that way I wouldn't, you know, have anxiety because that makes a person's that can make a person's heart rate go up if you know you're about to be put under okay because I was waiting for them to tell me but you guys so yeah that this was my vlog of my postpartum or postpartum I, I think that's what you call it so you guys I love you all hope this video was informative you could definitely send me an email or leave your comments below if you have any questions and I will see you guys on the other side. And I'll keep you updated once I get to like probably six to eight weeks. I'll tell you how I really, really feel after that. Never